What's up everybody, Dr. Rossi Shrinks and Sneakers.com. So I'm gonna transition off medications for a few minutes and I'm going to talk a little bit about attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, also known as ADHD. And a lot of people have questions about this diagnosis. There's even debate within the clinical community and the, and the physicians and psychiatrists about whether or not this is a real diagnosis or not. And we're going to talk about the basics of it, how it's diagnosed, what are the symptoms that we're looking for, and then we're going to talk about treatment. So let's start out with the basics. So ADHD, it's the most common childhood disorder. It's the most common psychiatric disorder we see in children. Very, very common. The prevalence is somewhere between 5 and 11 percent, which is significant. And even 1 percent of the population is significant, but this is 5 to 11 percent of school-aged children will have ADHD. It often presents with a classic triad, but sometimes this is not always the case. And the triad will be inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. So it has three different it has three different components to the triad there: inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. And we'll get into what constitutes each of those symptom clusters. What are the inattention symptoms? What are the hyperactivity symptoms? And then what are the impulsivity symptoms? However, in many cases, like I said, it presents as a mixed features or, it's prim or it can be primarily inattentive or primarily hyperactive. So when you're di making the diagnosis, sometimes you'll say it's mixed or you'll say it's primarily inattentive or primarily hyperactive, depending on what symptoms are most prominent. Now, in order for this diagnosis to be made, you must have at least six signs of inattention or, or six signs of hyperactivity impulsivity for six months. So it's six signs or symptoms, it's six signs or symptoms along with six months of duration. And we'll talk about what those actual symptoms are that you're looking for. Now it's a little different if you're 17 years or older. So if we're talking about adult ADHD, it's actually only five symptoms of inattention or hyperactivity impulsivity that's required. Another important point is that these symptoms must be present before the age of 12. So what I, what I mean by that is it doesn't necessarily have to be diagnosed before the age of 12. It just means that these symptoms have to have been present at that time, causing difficulty and dysfunction for the patient. Now, of course, that might be difficult with adult populations because we're talking about many, many years ago. But that's another key important point to making this diagnosis. So I said we had this idea of mixed, primarily inattentive, primarily hyperactive, impulsive. Now we said you need at least six symptoms for six months. So what are the inattention symptoms? You're going to see with these, it's a lot of overlap. And it's often difficult to remember all of these, even for, even for you know, the most astute clinicians, unless you're an ADHD expert. But oftentimes, you know, you're going to use screening scales to help with that diagnosis as well. But these symptoms of inattention include failure to pay close attention, difficulty sustaining attention to tasks and activities, failure to listen when spoken to, difficulty organizing tasks, avoiding activities that require mental effort, losing things necessary to perform the activities, and distractibility and forgetfulness in daily activities. So you can see it's a lot of the same thing, you know, failure to pay close attention, difficulty sustaining your attention, difficulty organizing tasks. A lot of the same, a lot of overlap, but again, you need a combination of symptoms here for mixed, right? Or, or if you have primarily hyperactive or impulsive, you'll have more of the hyperactive or impulsive symptoms. Now, the hyperactive symptoms, they include things like fidgeting with your hands or feet, inability to sit still, running around when it's not appropriate, difficulty engaging in quiet activities, so quiet study, feeling on the go or driven by a motor, and talking excessively. So those are the symptoms of hyperactivity. And then the last symptom cluster is the ones of impulsivity. And that would be things like blurting out answers in class before questions are completed, having trouble taking turns or waiting for others, and frequently interrupting other people when it's not appropriate. So those are the impulsivity symptoms. Now, in order for anything to be considered a disorder, it has to be causing dysfunction in the person's life, significant functional impairment. And that's exactly what we see with ADHD as well. So it's a pattern of behavior that must be severe and it must occur more often 
than in other children of the same age. So we're looking to compare these kids to their peers and see that these symptoms are not only impairing their function, but it's occurring more often than what it would at what, what we consider normal development for that age. So the symptoms, like I said, they have to be present before the age of 12. Of course, the diagnosis can be made after the age of 12, but you want to have evidence for the symptoms before the age of 12 to make the diagnosis. The most important point is symptoms have to occur in two different settings. So whenever we're making this diagnosis in school-aged children, I'll often give my screening scales one to the parents to fill out because they, they are able to look at the child in the home environment. And they'll also, I will also give one to, I will also give one to the teacher and they'll be able to give me a fair and, and uh, objective observation of that child in the school setting. So again, two or more settings, home and school being the most common for school age children. So I think while there's a lot of debate about this, and I've seen both sides of it, I've worked with ADHD experts and, and who do a lot of ADHD, ADHD treatment and really believe in this diagnosis, and then I've heard the other side of it where they basically say that a lot of times it's a transient issue, it does go away as the person ages, they're not really on medication all the time, and so there's data to kind of support it both ways. Now, I don't personally work in child adolescent psychiatrists, I don't see as much ADHD um, other than in training, but, the, but, but it remains an important diagnosis to be mindful of, and it can cause significant functional impairment for those who are dealing with it. So I'm going to stop there for now. I'm going to cover treatment in the next section. Um, if you guys have questions about ADHD, you can drop them in the comment section below. And if these videos are helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel. It helps us to keep making content.